Hi everyone. Today, let's talk about battery degradation on the Outlander PHEV. Now that's a big topic, a hot topic normally. If you have an Outlander or if you're considering buying an Outlander used, you will probably have debated either with yourself or with others the topic of battery degradation. So I thought it would be worthwhile sharing a couple of stats on my own car as well as a couple of considerations around the topic. So first things first, I purchased my car at uh, about 68,000 kilometers. It had 88.8% of state of health on the battery. Now that was after a procedure that's called the DB cam and the DB cam allows to go back to the actual capacity of the battery. And I thought 88% is absolutely fine. Now, one thing you should consider is that on an Outlander, you will never get access to the last, the bottom 25 to 30% of the capacity on the battery. So anything below 12 ampere hours is, is really a no, no man's land uh, for the car. And I think it has to do with, of course, uh, protecting the, the overall the battery, the battery life, but also being able to have this buffer to use when operating in pure hybrid mode. Now, if I look at my car, which is in those light dots here, um, over the time I've had the car and having done about 8,000 kilometers, well, yes, I can see some degradation or some reduction in the available capacity from 35.5 ampere hours to 34.5. So two to three percentage points, probably. Now, is that a problem? Well, of course, it's never good news because that will translate definitely in loss of range. Um, having said that, um, this is just one ampere hour. You have to multiply that by about 300 volts. So we are talking about 0.3 kilowatt hours and 0.3 kilowatt hours is about one and a half kilometers, maybe a bit less. So I've lost in six months, I've lost about one to two kilometers of range because of either actual battery degradation or because of the management software. Now, if you look at the rest of the cars that are been reported about the thousand readings from six, 761 vehicles, uh, I'm doing fairly well compared to the, the average. And you can see that even my degradation as the slope of that curve is very similar. So it could be natural degradation in the main. However, um, yes, I would not want to buy any of the scars at the bottom of the chart. Um, but if you consider that about 274 cars had a DB cam, this procedure where it's bumping up more often than not. I mean, there are some exceptions and outliers where things have gone down, but in the main, you're bumping up again the overall capacity of the car if you're gonna be doing that DB cam. So the real problem is one of a battery management system more so than it is of the battery degradation itself. Yes, of course, the battery is degrading. Uh, however, I consider that having bought a car that has not far from 70,000 kilometers, I wouldn't expect it to be a new battery. So in the main, I've decided that over the period of time I've had the car, this is not a major issue. Um, yes, it does affect the range. Yes, it would mean over time, eventually, probably having to do a reset again. And yes, over time, eventually you lose a bit more of that range. But I think the main question, uh, which is a question I've answered myself, is do I want to run this car as a PHEV? In which case having 30, 35, 40, 45 kilometers on a good day is good enough. Or do I absolutely want to run this as an EV? In which case, well, this is not an EV. And therefore the battery degradation and the battery capacity in itself is not a major consideration. 
the question of PHEV or EV is a much more important and fundamental question to answer. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.